Hello there, everyone, and welcome to the start of a new campaign in Red World. Fan for four hearts of iron. For I'm your host, Mr. Uh, Mocha Lover, and right now we're going to begin that campaign as the Union of American People's Republics, <clears throat> 30th Party Congress, the 30th Congress of the Tom. Atomic. American Communist Party is set to begin. An already faction is preparing for an upset in the chamber. Could Secretary Davis be removed from office after 23 years of power? Approving the budget. The 30th Communist Party Congress opened today with much fanfare. Soldiers lined the streets of LA in a lavish military parade showcasing the greatest army in the Western Hemisphere for all to see. Red flags flew high in celebration of a new beginning in the International was sung by a crowd of thousands outside Congress Hall. Inside the enormous building, General Secretary Angela Davis made a short speech to fellow members. Um, uh, Concerning the need for centralized and stable leadership before officially opening the 2010's Congress for Business. The first order of the day was a vote on the 31st budget developed by the Politburo in consultation with the regional administrators and several key stakeholders. Inevitably, the budget was approved with no objections and the first day of the 30th Party Congress ended with peace and unanimous agreement. Tomorrow, party members will follow up on this vote with the reorganization of the Politburo, an event that could see major upsets against incumbent members. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Cool. So this is, we are the Union of American People's Republic. Uh, I don't think I've ever played these people before. I might have, but I kind of doubt it. But the Las Vegas question. Las Vegas, once a city of paradise, now lies abandoned in Nevada's vast desert. While our previous efforts at rejuvenation have failed, a new committee must be formed to answer the Las Vegas question once and for all. <clears throat> reorganization of the Politburo. The second day of the 2010's Communist Party of Congress saw a limited reorganization of the prestigious Politburo. While many senior members maintained their respective roles, or simply shifted into different but equally important positions, some rising stars in the party saw openings and took them. One such star was Kamala Harris, a respected but apparently manipulative representative for the lesser Oakland district. As votes were being cast on positions within the Politburo, Harris had made sure to secure support from enough party members well in advance. The scheme. Suppose the kickstart in early 2008 paid off in the end as Kamala Harris unseated John Foster from his foreign ministry seat. Opposing delegates to Congress were apparently furious that such a young and seemingly inexperienced member of the party have been allowed to rise to foreign minister. Nevertheless, heavyweights within the centralist and liberationist factions were pleased upon hearing that one of the most powerful men in the unionist faction had been removed from the Volta Bureau. So now we get Kamala Harris, huh? Okay. Just okay. The Committee for the Redevelopment of uh, Las Vegas. The Committee for the re Redevelopment of Las Vegas has just been formed by Angela Davis. Aimed at finally answering the Las Vegas question, the Committee will seek various opinions on the issue and commence multiple investigations to formalize a solution as soon as possible. The General Secretary declared in a speech not long after the 30th Party Congress that there would be a significant progress made in the Nevada districts towards economic redevelopment, but never directly referenced the infamous city of Las Vegas. Since the Great Collapse has remained in various levels of abandonment, now a mere shell of its past, casinos crumble and the Strip remains in pure darkness at night. The only signs of life in Las Vegas are the few suburban residents who still remain on the outskirts of, one, of the once internationally renowned gambling strip. Interesting. So let's just let it rot. <laughs> Ain't that a kick in the head, huh? We start Hoover Dam. That'd be pretty good, honestly. Reconnect the coast. Propaganda opportunities. Those okay. Fast track demolition. All but stardust. Model city. Reap the benefits. Uh, that's not bad either. I want to restart Hoover Dam though. That sounds really good. But gleaming reward. Construct new casinos. Paradise workers complex. Nevada hyperloop. Back in business. Ooh, I like that too. Ooh, I want to try that one. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, Las Vegas will be transformed into a paradise for workers who have earned a vacation through hard work. That sounds awesome. Construct new casinos. These new casinos will serve as a hub for the glamorous city in the middle of Nevada's desert. <clears throat> An election of the General Secretary. After several unimportant debates regarding party policy coming into the new decade, the big day has finally arrived. Almost a week since opening day, the 30th Congress, Party Congress, is now prepared to elect General Secretary... Many outside the hall suspect a clean victory for Angela Davis, but a recent unrest in Cascadia and abysmal economic situation could lead to a historic upset against our current leader. Factions within the Communist Party have already unofficially nominated candidates for the top job, as official factionalism is illegal as of the 1995 Constitution. Representing the Centralists is Davis herself, seeking to improve the Union's economy for a few years before liberating the American people. Her most dangerous opponent is Jarvis Tyner, a former friend during the 70s and 80s and vice presidential candidate, turned leader of the Liberationist uh, faction. His group within the party hoped for an almost immediate liberation of the former U.S., a policy that has split Los Angeles for many years since 1987. The third contender is John Foster of the Unionist faction, demanding closer cooperation with the Soviet Union and eventually for a bottom or verbatim adoption of the Soviet model. I don't do all of these, but honestly, I think I'll probably just stay with the Centralists for now. Oh, we can do that one too? Oh. I'm going to have to get time for this one. Let it rot. Uh, maybe next time. When he plays time, maybe we'll go that way. 
but the Congress closes. The 30th Congress of the Communist Party officially closed today with remarks from the recently re-elected General Secretary Davis. In her speech, she outlined an ambitious plan for economic development, as well as the foundations for a future three-year plan. While many within the liberationist and unionist factions were clearly disappointed in this week's results, sensuous throughout the hall gave the comrades a standing ovation for a minute on end signifying an optimistic outlook for the future of our union. Whether Davis can keep her promise of ending this terrible economic situation and eventually unifying or uniting the former U.S. remains to be seen, but millions of watching millions watching the spectacle are certainly hopeful that their previous way of life can be restored. Great. And we have a little bit of game. So, because I think it's my first time playing this, because I don't remember reading about any of this stuff before. Um, we're just going to do uh, the traditional way. Then again, I do want to play Montana sometime, too. They seem like a fun group, but we'll see what happens. Among the three possible routes outlined for the, uh, by the Committee for the Redevelopment of Las Vegas, the uh, unofficially titled Gleaming Reward Plan has been unanimously approved by members of the aforementioned committee. Despite a push from outside groups for other proposed initiatives, the spectacle of Gleaming Reward could remain too enticing for the committee to reject. Although the official document extends across more than 100 pages, a brief summary of the report delivered to General Secretary Angela Davis states that this plan will turn crumbling Las Vegas back into a hub of gambling and entertainment, however. In fitting with the ideals of our nation, access to the city will be reserved to workers who meet quota and have pledged total allegiance to social slots since the union came to be. Within Las Vegas, they'll be able to relive the supposed glory days of the city under capitalism and can return to their workmates not long after to convince them of the benefits to meeting quota. A very interesting idea. <clears throat> Three steps of freedom, huh? Uh, Long-term planning, not bad. It's pretty quick. Ooh, that's not bad. Not great for cap, but that's okay. <clears throat> and then we have Comrade Davis. Her final purge. Female recruitment campaign. It's okay, I guess. Centralized estate. Ooh, that's not bad. Future development projects. So let's do long-term planning. We simply cannot rush into a risky development and an early war with the closest neighbor. Long-term economic planning is desirable compared to the proposals of the liberationist faction. And we're building some civvies. We've got two motorized divisions, which are literally just motorized. We have Soviet surplus rifles. Chapel of the Tablet destroyed. No faction wins the convention. And we have 20 combat with infantry, which is actually pretty nice. With artillery and engineers. I'm thinking that's pretty darn decent. Not going to lie. But a national spirit. Standing firm. <clears throat> we also have... Cascadian separatism, which is really bad. Really, really bad. We have a failing economy. Well, I mean, we are communists. And then immigration. Not bad. Not bad overall. And we have a few planes here that we're doing okay with our, our training right now as well. Even though we're getting like, no our air XP, but whatever. <clears throat> Modern intranet. Nice. And we do four research slots. So this is probably one of the major powers here. Also, someone in another campaign asked if Texas has a unique focus tree. OPEC member, huh? Oh, they don't. Oh, that sucks. Oh, why? I wanted to play Texas. I was thinking about playing as Texas, but darn it. Construction of new casinos. Construction is reportedly well underway of new casinos in Las Vegas, as the skyline is rid of its ugly, abandoned shells, replaced with a true jewel in the desert. According to sources within the government, the General Secretary made a secret visit to Nevada just a few days ago to meet construction workers, town planners, and the Las Vegas District Administrator ahead of comp completion. The national government's proportional investment in the project has grown since the committee announced its commencement, and apparently the people are growing more excited every day as images of construction are released. However, to maintain interest in our initiative, it will probably require a lot more funding than currently invested in order to meet the publicly announced deadline. Send more funding. Do we have a time limit for this? Honestly, I just want to go that, down that way. Um, removing immigration. Board is closed, huh? All right. Ooh. Ooh, technology. Oh, you get our blueprints? Oh, defense on court territory is pretty good, though. I like that a lot. You know, unofficial Las Vegas versus Paradise Workers Complex. The Paradise Workers Complex is said to be the biggest building in Nevada upon completion. Transforming Las Vegas into a true workers' oasis in the desert. Rising Eagle? Oh, I've heard another fantasy. Cool. Right, Soviet admirals, huh? Down with the Americanism, huh? Oh, while California becomes Katayama? Wow. Nevada Hyperloop. The proposed Nevada Hyperloop will connect Las Vegas to major cities and towns around the Union, dramatically reducing transport times and letting people cross the Union in but a few short hours. Nice. We can't change this. God dang it. Uh, industry. Uh, manpower. We're definitely going to need more manpower. But I want to hurt our output. You get 1% more. Oh, we have Christian Parenti, huh? But you get more manpower, which we, do, we will need. Carmen Shapiro tours the nation. What? What? Today. Uh, Mark, one of the, our nation's most influential speakers towards across the nation. Having let the young communists leave for th the last three years, Comrade Benjamin Shapiro, 
has begun touring the nation, visiting middle and high schools to attract interest in the league's activities originally. Founded in 1920, the league has always promoted party loyalty among the American youth above all, however. Under the guidance of Comrade Shapiro, this focus has started to shift away towards educational and exercise programs. While unorthodox in his leadership, active membership of the YCL has increased tenfold, making the league a widespread success. Starting in L.A., Shapiro gave a speech uh, to a room of high school students saying that, let's say hypothetically, you join the YCL. What does it offer you? Camaraderie, education, and everlasting friendship. Here in the YCL, you will grow as a person. You will become the future of our union and protect the revolution Comrade Davis works secure now. Without you, the future will not be will not know about a revolution. Now, Comrade Shapiro heads to Seattle, where he will continue his tour, bringing in thousands of applications to the YCL along with him. Comrade Shapiro is the voice of the next generation. Can we get Ben Shapiro as leader of this nation? Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, the Mayday attack. That sucks, bro. Back in business, baby. With the new casinos and area for celebration, Las Vegas is back in business. Nice. Get more output, division recovery rate, Vegas up for business, get more uh, CP, and get some better consumer goods. Nice. Yeah, I didn't think I would be focusing on uh, uh, <laughs> rebuilding Las Vegas as uh, communist California, basically. Matthew Shia succeeds Harold Covington. Who is this? White Freedom Alliance. Leader of Montana. Is that, is that right? Oh, Matthew Shia. Who the heck is Matthew Shia? Africa? What the heck is... Africa? Oh, I'm like... White Freedom Alliance, and you start, start talking about Africa? You're not even close to Africa. Immigration, huh? The yeah, immigration kind of hurts us right now, doesn't it? Oh, oh yeah, do you have any streets, Angela Davis? No, you don't. Okay. Civil War in Libya? Pretty normal, pretty, pretty darn normal. We have John Romer. Kamala Harris. We have Baba Seal. Christian Parenti is not bad. Fred Hampton Jr. <clears throat> Nevada Hyperloop. The greatest transport and innovation in this nation's history. Uh, perhaps the world has just been officially opened by the committee chairman. Named the uh, Nevada Hyperloop. Uh, this method of passenger transportation between the rebuilt Las Vegas and other metropolitan areas was based on Robert Goddard's VAC, VAC train has been slated to drastically slash travel times. A feat of social engineering, according to our dear general secretary. The project was on the back burner for quite a time until the Las Vegas Commission or committee pushed for construction as soon as possible, labeling the Hyperloop a top priority to ensure the general efficiency of this new bustling paradise. Despite the praise, however, skeptics uh, within the government have voiced some concerns of Angela Davis, calling it potential security risk, prone to acts of violent dissent, apparently. The General Secretary rejected these claims, however. After all, there's no strong enough opposition to the social system to allow for such attacks. Is that a pipeline? Like a keystone pipeline or something? Huh. Uh, let's see. 50, 50. That wouldn't be too bad. I do want more consumer goods. But develop urban centers first. While regional development is important, urban centers are in desperate need of attention from the central government. Refugees arrive in Sicily. Well, good luck with that, guys. Oh, I forgot to make divisions. My bad. Oh. Honestly, you're only eight combos, but you can make, we can make you quite a bit bigger. Armor Brigade. Where's she? Oh, I don't know just yet. Oh, huh. all right, whatever. I mean, we, fight, we have a lot of mountains here, so I'm not really concerned about that too much yet. Uh, let's see, you guys. We do need some more screens for you all. Oh, we have anti-air four. Oh, that's pretty good. Hydrophone, that's fine. Don't think we're really getting into too many naval battles, big on being over here. So, but you never know. There you go. Now we have no steel too. So it'll be done in 2020. About 10 years. Wow, that sucks. Uh, we need a lot more guns, don't we? We need a lot more steel. Uh, I don't mind trading away for maybe two steel. Alright. Yeah, get two steel so we can just focus and build more, 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 more. That does help, that help out quite a bit, but even though it's supposed to be like cruiser. Eh. Sorry. Go territories. Eh. Industry's probably best for now. Aiden attack, huh? Cool. Coffee's pretty good, though. Because we want to get them cities. Vegas open for business. 
After the successful first trials of the Nevada Hyperloop and the completion of casino construction along the main boulevard, Las Vegas is formally open for business as of today. District administrators throughout Nevada flocked to the city to marvel at what her colleagues had rebuilt in the desert. A true sight to behold, the area should not become a hotspot for workers that come and enjoy the benefits of working hard and meeting all quotas, which naturally shouldn't be too hard in this booming, glorious economy. The General Secretary was unfortunately unable to attend Las Vegas' grand opening as an important visit to the northern regions was already scheduled. However, a letter from the office was read out of the ceremony, followed by cheers and a standing ovation for the crowd below, consisting of many workers that had themselves helped to build the marvelous wonder of the world behind them. Viva Las Vegas! And relax quotas? Or just quote? Quotas, yeah. Relax quotas. We'll do that one because I want that consumer goods and stability. Production quotas are far too high to satisfy the American workers. After all, a happy worker is a productive worker. And too bad some businesses and stuff like that don't understand that. It's unfortunate. So do the Mormons have a unique focus tree? Oh, they don't. That's sad. State of Arizona? They don't either. Darn it. Union of Lincoln? Ah, Spencer. Oh, that Richard Spencer guy's done nothing wrong ever. Um, Midwest Union can elect Bill Clinton somehow. Not sure how, but, you know. Oh, why not Chi Revolts? Ah, I, was, I was waiting for this one. Uh, let's see, let's go over here. Anything over here? We really want, yeah, MK3s. Tension between the Columbus government and the Cascadian separatists has re finally reached a boiling point in, in recent years with continued government policies failing to appease the general populace. <clears throat> Today, however, the first genuine revolt against the nation took place in the outskirts of Wenatchee. Cascadians, with the intent of overthrowing a peaceful government, announced to illegal newspapers uh, that they had officially taken up arms in the forest, supposedly amassing an enormous fighting force of patriots. Whether the latter statement is true is up to debate, however. Reports from the area suggest that a government radio tower near Wenatchee Wena has been occupied and is now broadcasting separatist messages. Well, not much to go on. It's becoming increasingly clear that the Cascadian issue must come to a resolution as soon as possible via through diplomacy or violent crackdown. Yakima self immolation. Upon hearing the new, uh, news of the uprising in uh, uh, Wenatchee, a, a dissident in the city of Yakima has horribly or horrifically burned themselves in, alive in the view of a countless innocents on the way to the work, taking place in a busy area of the city. This shocking act is a direct attack against the government, as footage clearly shows the men waving two Cascadian flags before setting himself ablaze. Once again, the separatists horrify fellow Americans for the sake of publicity. Pretty normal. Hop farmers rebel. The Yakima Valley is one of being one of the largest exporters of hop flowers, used as a key ingredient in the production of beer today. <clears throat> Countless hop farmers rebelled in an act of defiance against the government, claiming in, in a vile letter to their regional administrators that yesterday's self-immolation had driven them over the edge. According to the dissidents, the region has suffered too much under the Communist Party's tyrannical re uh, reign, and the only op answer is open revolt. Despite attempts by local leaders to stop word of Yakima's events from spreading, even cities as far as Seattle and Portland are supposedly well aware of the situation unfolding. Well, it certainly won't destabilize the entire country. If we can't put a stop to this treachery, there could be further effects down the track on national unity. Rebel scum. We're ready to go. Oh, uh, the revolt was crushed. Okay. Thankfully, the American People's Army's revolt, uh, or the American People's Army's crushed revolt near Wenatchee today. Commanders of the operation met with General Secretary Davis just a few minutes ago to inform that they that the occupied radio tower have been liberated and hundreds of rebels have been killed. However, they also say that they couldn't be more simply waiting to strike in the city of Wenatchee, as they don't believe there were enough in the force itself. Nevertheless, this is a great, definite, definitely a great victory for the Union and will show Cascadian separatists elsewhere the cause is a failed one. Excellent. Well, we're kind of ready for it now. A great beer strike. Oh, well, maybe we should do that stuff first, I guess. Uh, close that out for now. Uh, beer factory workers across the Colombian People's Republic have walked out today, declaring a strike in solidarity with the hop farmers in Yakima Valley. The strike is one of the largest in a short national history, and has been projected by subversives across the world in an effort to gain an international support for the separatist cause. Already, reports are flung into L.A. of some workers being beaten by police, as some looked on in horror and others fought back in vain attempts. Senior members of the Pulitzer Bureau convened today to discuss the developments in Colombia. Concerned that further violent repression could only result in even more citizens with rebellious attitudes. Whatever the outcomes of this entire situation, the strike has wounded us at a worse time. Darn them too. Cascadian Troubles Dissidents in the Colombian Republic claim to be fighting for the good of fight against the brave soldiers. Something must be done about the situation before it gets out of hand. Um, crush a revolt. Uh, large protests in Portland have been ruthlessly crushed by police, with thousands arrested and countless injured or even killed. Supposedly, the protests concern a solidarity movement growing across the region, uniting dissident workers in beer factories, hop farmers in Yakima, and rebels in Wenatchee. But there's still a little evidence of united political movement. Administrators hailed this crackdown as a major victory for the government, firstly calling Angela Davis to congratulate them on a job well done. On the other hand, growing skepticism in the party continues to press pressure on the general secretary, with many now of the opinion that this can only mean worse developments to come. For now, Portland is subdued, but anything else could happen in the coming days. Good work. Huh. Oh. 
regional developments. Well, we can't go that one. So we're going to meet the Cascadians. They're like Columbia. I kind of want to give them freedom. I kind of want to go with Crush Cascadian Revolt. Rebels in Colombia will be crushed without mercy. The American People's Army stands ready to crush these intransigent hop farmers and the counter revolutionary allies and restore their order to the Northern Republic. Despite attempts to reconcile the hop farmers in Yakima Valley, the government decided less than two nights ago to execute the traitors, claiming that they would not accept any concessions until Cascadian independence was secured. One member of the political bureau, Kamala Harris, expressed to the General Secretary her suspicion that regional administrators were covering up a lazy solution to a serious issue. Expecting to be rep reprimanded for the statement, Harris was instead surprised when Angela Davis agreed that the situation could be getting out of hand, and from her action <clears throat> from L.A. was needed. Just a few hours ago, all hot farmers who were involved in the rebellion were either executed by firing squad or hanging from a tree on the state farms. The central government must have been. Oh, the rebels in Wenatchee. Unsurprisingly, however, uh, previously crushed rebels on the outskirts of Wenatchee have once again risen in the surrounding forest, this time with an even greater fighter force. Apparently, numbering in the thousands, decentralized groups of separatists now occupy significant swaths of the land and could be preparing for an assault on the city itself. The urban administrator of Wenatchee flew to L.A. to personally meet Angela Davis and offer assurances that ruthless force would be used to once again destroy the revolt. However, the latter firstly declared that no military from the area would be engaging with the Cascadians. Instead, special forces from L.A. and San Francisco would be deployed to counter the separatists that. But it may be far too late, as many more here are the uprising and seek to join the ranks. Kaboom! Well, since we have to wait for that anyways. Foreign policy, don't know if we're going to do that much, too much, but... Lux quotas! Because why not? Back in business, Popular Front formed. The American Intelligence Bureau has confirmed that an underground Popular Front has been formed between Cascadian separatists. Previously unaligned in a constant cold war between each other, the movements have united under one banner to fight against the government. While speculation still runs rampant, the General Secretary has been informed that the apparent leader of this Popular Front is Greg Walden, a former administrator for the Waco District. Or Wasco, not Waco. Oh boy. Wasco District. <clears throat> or Wasco. In the early 2000s, he was removed from office by Comrade Davis due to vicious disagreements over economic policy in Colombia, remaining a recluse since. Other leaders of the groups are unknown, but said to have consist of socialists, conservatives, libertarians, social democrats, and right-wing nationalists. How could this have happened? Because it's in the script. Leavenworth occupied. If the small city of Leavenworth has been fully occupied by advancing rebel forces in the past few hours, marking the first major victory for the separatists. Modeled on the Bavarian villages, the area was a famous tourist site for many years until economic pressures forced many businesses to close down. This could be a significant reason why residents openly celebrated rebel arrival, darning the Communist Party's tyrants and oppressors of their small community. Upon hearing this terrible news, General Secretary Angela Davis was naturally livid, telling close advisors that if the central government could have stepped in sooner, this whole situation would have, never, would have been avoided. However, what's done is done, and until military forces can arrive in the region, which is littered with hundreds of small but extremely dangerous cells, Leavenworth will be in separate sense. Another failure. And then... Coffee. Cascadian leaders demand concessions. Bolstered by the recent victory in Leavenworth, leaders of the Cascadian Popular Front are now demanding concessions from the central government. And a recorded message sent to LA. Self proclaimed Commander Greg Walden produced a list of requirements for the rebel rebellion to end. Followed by a warning that if all were not met, Cascadia would rise to the challenge of an all out war. The political bureau is currently in an emergency session called by Angela Davis. And a police deeply split on the issue. Long-term members call for the final destruction of separatists in Colombia, while new counterparts uh, suggest concessions could be made to keep the country united. Ultimately, the General Secretary has his, his final word. To heck with them. Jeb. What? Jeb. <gasps> Jeb. <clears throat> oh, i got to go back and play the American Republic sometime, but Cascadian forces rise. After Angela Davis rejected any proposal to meet with the Cascadians delegation, central leaders of the popular hello um, front announced today they would now wage a war for independence against our union. The rebels always poised to strike and when uh, when not chief force rejoice for those. Although those still uncertain about joining the cause finally signed up. Did it mark a turning point in the Cascadian crisis as an organized rebel military rises to the challenge of defeating our mighty military? Or they could be victorious is now a hot topic for all observers around the world. But many suspect that within weeks there will be no more pop popular front to speak up to the union. Oh. Okay, then. Oh, they do have any focus street, do they? Christ Cascadia, yeah. For Coalition for Freedoms, uh, Independence Party, Labor Front, huh. Stein, Tax Reform, Cascadian Confederation, kind of cool. The war begins, as rebel forces seize vast swaths of the land in Colombia. Some of the political bureau are beginning to question if we could even survive a war. But no one would outside, outright say it for fear of reprisal. In truth, our economy is still, of course, in shambles, and our military is woefully unprepared for any such military conflict. 
<clears throat> Perhaps it would be best to cut our losses and focus on the home front. Why would we do that? Give us a couple days. I want to set ourselves up more efficiently first. Go straight in. Still Seattle, which is pretty nice right now. Doing okay here? If you can cut them off, that'd be great. And we can't win there? That's still fine. Just because we're going to push in as much as we possibly Okay, then. That was nice. That was fun. Uh, so, do we get an event about that? Probably. Um, are we supposed to be able to win that fast? Huh. Crush the Cascading Revolt? Yeah. If we crush without mercy, the American People's Army stands ready to crush us in transient hot bombers and the to revolutionary allies and restore order to the Northern Repu Republic. Uh, Post-war reconstruction. After such a devastating war, reconstruction must be on the way, roads must be repaired, factories rebuilt, and public infrastructure restored. Although it takes some time before the Colombian People's Republic is back on track. Rebuilding begins. Reconstruction of the utterly destroyed Colombian People's Republic has officially begun today, with the regional government calling on all of its citizens to take up arms in the form of hard work and diligence. With countless cascading traders killed in the recent war for American unity, the job of managing such an effort effectively has become easier for the administration. And a report sent to Andrew Davis this morning indicates that Colombia could be back on track within less than two years. However, several obstacles to rebuilding include stragglers who fail to be crushed in the war, mounting costs in the time of economic downturn, and a totally battered infrastructure network. This coming years will be certainly tough for Americans in Colombia, but in the end, we shall come out of this war with a brighter future and a stronger nation. Strength in the Republic. The imbalance between the Californian and Colombian People's Republics was one of the reasons for the Civil War. The Colombian People's Republic shall be economically and politically stronger than ever to ensure that the Colombians, oh my god, uh, f truly feel their place as equals in our union. Is this Midwest Union? Oh boy. Oh boy. Independent Security Force. For the first time ever, a constituent republic of the Union will have its own independent security forces. How? Why are the Clintons in the Midwest? I, that doesn't make any sense. How? Who would elect her? I mean, it's one thing would elect Bill Clinton. What? What is the lore behind that? Because it's not like they have a unique focus tree. It's just generico. For news for now. Man, the defenses. Despite our victory in the war, some rebel holdouts still remain yet. This cannot be tolerated. Our nation must be defended against rebel threats. We must fortify our positions and siege down what rebels remain. Pretty much, man. Pretty much. As we're trying to build ourselves up more, 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 more. We need, do need some... Some more steel. Yeah. I don't mind. Okay, get one more. It's fine. And return to normalcy. Oh, there goes Texas. And they do not have a unique focus tree, yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, boy. Remove Cascadian separatism. Tensions in Cascadia have died down. With the last rebel hideouts having surrendered and the authority of the party reasserted. The re captured rebels are being given their rifle sentences. And our soldiers, returning soldiers, are celebrating as heroes of the revolution. The pen might be ma mightier than the sword, but the Kalashnikov beats both. Get rid of Cascadian separatism, at least for now. It yeah, probably will come back in the future, but oh well. Because right now that's really bad. We get plus 0.5 more political power and 25% more stability. Please, 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 please. Yeah, we'll make more divisions. Yes, please. Italian Congress overthrown. Oh, hello. Someone joined the Warsaw Pact, didn't they? Someone became red. And what are you guys up to? Oh, Jeremy Corbyn, huh? New NHS, huh? Cool. Get some better drones. We'll use those type of drones for this campaign. What were defenses? Second coon, second coon row? Huh. After return to normalcy... Uh, let's do engaged workers. Let's do Comrade Davis eventually. General Secretary Angela Davis has led the Union since its foundation in 1987 and has now been reaffirmed as paramount leader once more. Leaders of the central factions. Davis will likely continue to cement the power of her and her party. It is still only 2011, everybody, so better tanks, I guess? A second coup? Oh. Okay. Well, whatever. Need more manpower. But okay. Sure, whatever. Okay. Okay. We do be poping it up here. And the Pope is a communist, Francis. Situation in Cascade has finally been resolved. 
and the remaining elements of the Cascadian separatism, seemingly gone without a trace. Andrew Davis spoke to the Politburo Bureau this morning to announce that news had been delivered via intelligence services, where it was received with a standing ovation at economic figures. Ever poorly picked up since Cascadia returned to normalcy, is equating to a historic victory for the embattled General Secretary, and delivering much needed assurances for the various stakeholders of the economic process, who were previously concerned about our nation's economic direction. The General Secretary will make another visit to Seattle in the coming weeks to discuss with regional administrators the following steps their government should take to maintain order and control, but will reportedly leave out most of the decision making to them. A stark contrast to previous national centralization policies. The final purge. Gener Secretary Angela Davis, the final purge will hopefully eliminate all opposition within the party. Once they're out of the way, we should not be held back as we build a more glorious union. Centralize the state. <clears throat> The union is not entirely centralized around one government and one leader. The time has come for the final steps to be taken to ensure that the central government can rule unchallenged and un unobstructed by anybody. Or by anybody else. Pretty much, man. Pretty much. I love the purge. Mm, recon and logistics, maybe. Despite more than two decades of consolidating power, there still remains wicked opposition to Comrade Davis in each of the republics. However, with an elevated position following the 30th Party Congress, General Secretary Davis has just initiated a purge of the Communist Party, in a similar fashion to those of years gone by. This purge began with the arrest of hundreds of officials in multiple cities, both late at night and early in the morning. The trials are still yet to be held, but they can be expected in the coming weeks, when they will be surely convicted of treason against the state. Two of the most, two most of the party, this comes as a relief. For years, the centralist faction has been pushing for a wide, total wipeout of opposition. A clique of traitors they blame for economic failures in the Cascadian situation. Now, Angela Davis has finally delivered. And soon, with scum out of the picture, we can move on with making the American Union a better place to live. Three-year plan. Ooh. Close our borders. Funding, huh? No, that's not bad either. Support population growth? Uh, declining populations in both urban, urban and regional centers is never a good sign for a modern nation, especially one that seeks to depend on overwhelming industrial output during the path to global liberation. It's not bad so far, but ooh, that PP is not great. But at least we got more political power now. We need more guns too. We need more rubber. We need we need a lot of things. <laughs> Let's be real. We need a lot of things here. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Colombian security forces. So what do we take out Arizona? Aryan Republic, huh? What is that? Supply focus, huh? English rides are very cool. Hmm. Which one are we doing? Population growth? Yeah. And then female recruitment campaign? Uh. Hmm. That would be bad. I guess we could do it. It's not that. Well, it's a 50 day focus, though. I prefer to combat inflation. Recent economic reports indicate that inflation is in. In the somewhat privatized Nevada, is rising at a greater pace at any point since the stabilization of 1992. This will not be difficult to fix. Instating greater price controls and raising the income tax for Nevada citizens will get our currency back under control. Greater price controls and raising taxes. Huh. Raising income tax. Hmm. Alright, well, let's see if it works. Cool. Yeah, dude, I definitely want to play as uh, the American People's Commonwealth again. I think I play as Bernie Sanders. Oh! The Northeast Union? I don't think I've seen them rebel before. Sam Webb, who the heck is that? Oh, they don't have a for this. Darn, that sucks. <clears throat> what did you do, though? No. I played... I'm pretty sure I played with Bernie. Um, I'm not sure which... Oh, there's Bernie's speech. Sanders in the committee, of course. Uh, made the best win. Cracked on committee rebellions. Begin investigation. Impeach him. Civil war. End of a civil war. Cool. Combat inflation first. And then engage workers. Effective resource allocations. Not bad. That's pretty good. But let's do technology, industry, improvements. Because we need to get rid of failing economy. We definitely have to get that one done. Extraction maybe? Maybe a little bit? Oh, there goes those guys. Goodbye. Uh, just because we can extract a little bit more steel so we don't have to import more, maybe? Well, actually, maybe not. Female recruitment campaign, regardless. Women represent the untapped wonders of America. Uh, th through their volunteering in each military branch, we can reach new heights of national strength. Um, 2011. I do like recon quite a bit, though, so let's get some recon. That'd be pretty nice. Cool. Need a little more army XP. And then women and the future development plans for infrastructure would be nice. And then the three-year plan was not good for PP. 
just fireball goes up by 150%. Holy crap, for three years. We probably want to go down this way as, pretty much as fast as possible because this stuff can wait. Sort of ish. We have a failing economy, which is, huh, not good, but it could be a lot worse, actually. It could be a lot worse. So, I guess we're going to throw women in the military. Look how happy they are to be fighting under the red banner. So happy. Philadelphia Constitution. Federation of American Syndicates. Oh, IWW Revolutionaries. That's cool. All right, up next, 2012 is coming soon, so I'm just going to get some research speed. That's fine. Future Development Projects. The Future Development Projects is an ambitious infrastructure initiative designed by Secretary Davis and her closest advisors. Once completed, every corner of our union shall be connected by high-speed rail and our highways expanded, tying the people ever closer together. Nice. Very, very nice. Actually, what do we have here? Let's see, start this maybe? American Intelligence Bureau? Is that a good name for us? I don't know. If you think you can come up with a better name than that, American Intelligence Bureau, I -A -A -I -B, please let me know in the com comments below. That, it just doesn't sound very inspirational. So, yeah. Then we'll get that one next. Francis gives way to socialists, of course. Pope Francis gave up. Down Socialist Republic. Giuliano, Giuliano, Amato, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, Germany so owns Austria, which is nice, Hans, Mr. Vlad, Charles Kennedy, Social Democratic Party, Zalib, wait, are you in your own faction? With Ireland? Wow. There's a speech on women. British Isles Protection Union, all right. General Secretary Davis has just delivered a major speech to an extraordinary session of the Communist Party. <clears throat> in line with a new political platform developed by the 30th Party Congress, our great comrade spoke of a need for more women in the armed forces, outlining a three-stage plan to expand recruitment campaigns to include more female ci union citizens. The General Secretary was met with a multiple standing ovations, one of the most prominent coming from fellow women in the Great Hall. While this is certainly not a recent development in the union's general social policy, there's still yet to have any been official push for female recruits, something that the party and millions outside of it hope to see after this historic speech. The three-year plan. The next three-year plan is aimed at stability, industrial expansion, and overall development of the nation before the Great Liberation War. We really use more manpower right now because our total population is 43 million, which is not bad actually. I kind of don't want mine going down there. I mean, we definitely need more factory output right now, but like, mm, mm. we do have a lot of peepee -pee, though. Who's under military staff? Offense? Ten oh, 10% more attack. Performer's not bad. Just X Commando. Uh, 70th birthday speech from Huey Newton. This is really good, too. Uh, today marks the 70th birthday of the revolutionary leader, Huey P. Newton. As one of the founding members of the Black Panthers, Comrade Newton's words have always been treated with respect. Now, on his birthday, he has spoken to our nation. Uh, when I was a younger man, my brothers and sisters of the Black Panther Party fought for equality. When the old order was swept away by the forces of the people, thousands of like-minded individuals came together against tyranny and injustice. Forming this glorious union, together we have achieved great things, but it's important that we do not fight or forget why we fight for equality for all. Our movement has been always been to liberate all races suffering from institutional racism and create a world where all races are equal, black, white, Hispanic, or Asian. We're all comrades here, and it's vital we do not forget this. There are some who oppose our union, and in time they will see the error of their ways. We will overcome our struggles. Our economy will grow, and our enemies will fall, and the people of our new union will prosper. To all of you, you give an old man hope that equality is achievable across America and the world. Thank you, comrades. As he finished his speech, Newton raised his right arm and raised his fist above his head. An inspiring speech from an inspiring man. And Home Chomsky's dead. Okay, that was quick. Well, direct democracy, huh? Where's that? Oh, it's over here. Okay, cool. Three party begins the three year plan. Happy 2012, everybody. Weird year, weird, weird, weird year. Centralist leaders have uh, spoken of the need for a defined period of time between the present and the Great Liberation War against our imperialist neighbors for decades. However, even the most prominent figures in the faction, Comrade Davis, has previously refused to offer any concrete deadline. Today, this all changes, with the Communist Party announcing at exactly midday that a three-year plan would soon be implemented to lay the groundwork for liberation in the same time period. Within the three-year period, there will be supposedly rapid economic growth and development of the nation as a whole, it's key to ensuring victory against capitalist tyranny after all. Without a strong and secure country, how can we expect to vanquish the combined forces of all our enemies? The three-year plan has unfortunately been met with some criticism, especially from certain groups within the, within the centralist faction who oppose its hostility against immigration and establishment of a service economy. Good. Um, Max factors in the state go up, which I like. Let's go for focus on stability. 
The Union is far too politically and economically unstable to wage war against imperial states, while both with the carrot and the stick. With both of them, we can ensure that the party stands ready for the Great Liberation War and close our borders. Many of the immigrants we are getting are unskilled and they don't speak English. Well, an admirable goal, admirable goal, to integrate them would take us resources that could be better put to use for the American people. For now, immigration must be halted. We need more world tension. Uh, let's help us support us for now. Man, defenses. Ah, oh, do it anyways. We lose five percent more output, uh, but whatever. We kind of need to. We got plenty of APCs though. Wow. It's coming along. Uh, we got both of these, which is pretty good overall. Not sure how much we're going to really need the Navy stuff, but synthetic oil experiments might as well. And yeah, close our borders because right now, with closing our borders, we lose plus 0.6 month of population, but we get three percent more stability. We get slightly more consumer goods. So overall, I think it's I think it's pretty much worth it. We should design and go infantry equipment because we can. We'll be focused on that quite a bit soon. So 15.5, not bad. 15.6 now, not bad. Close our borders, very good, and increase education funding. Children are the future of every country. <clears throat> we must be sure to mold ours into the perfect communists. And capable, ready and capable, of continuing the revolution when they become adults. By giving them the best education imaginable. We lose quite a bit of pee-pee, but whatever. Mobile defense is nice. Putin overthrows a Politburo. Ah. What a chad. Oh, Lithuania declares... Oh, boy. Oh, well, we'll see what happens here. <clears throat> so who wants this? Oh, it's just Russian, huh? So if oh, if SSRs Georgia, what did you do, Putin? Stagnating economy. I was wondering when they would come up. Borders closed. Rejecting a new wave of Central American immigrants, the Communist Party has just closed America's borders to future citizens, of course. In a secretive meeting just a few weeks ago, prominent members of the party drafted a decree that would significantly expand hostile board policies. These policies, they later claimed, secured the existence of our union as a seamless and secure society. However, bringing it to the table took much courage from the relevant members, as there had been recent growth in the pro-immigration faction coming to dominate the recent 30th Party Congress. In the end, a supermajority decided this new decree was for the best, to declare today in a joint statement to the press that America's boards would not be closed. The news comes as a shock to millions in Central America and beyond, who have heard of the significant steps we've taken and taken in ensuring a safe, free, and equal society, and unfortunately for them, they must find somewhere else to settle. Wow. Is this legal for them to rebel? Okay. Service economy? Oh, look at this. Oh, we should have waited for to do this, but whatever. Manufacturing economies have died around the world. Or died off. Transitioning to service economies over recent years, by returning workers to be able to take up jobs in the service sector, we can ensure that this transition goes by as smoothly as possible, and make the most of the information age. Ooh, indoctrination efforts. Crusading against racism? Challenge Moscow hegemony. Interesting. Wow, that is kind of weird. Afghanistan and uh oh, that, and just those guys over there, huh? That's weird. Twenty twelve, of course. You can do that because you can. Because California actually has quite a bit of fuel itself. Albania's still there too. What's up? What's going on here? What are you doing, Yugoslavia? Nothing. God dang it. Three percent world tension sucks. Uh, planes. Tanks. We'll probably do tanks faster than anything else, so we'll do that one first. 313 is the next year for stuff. Uh, signal companies, maybe. Because oh, I love to throw logistic companies on our guys, but we don't have the means to do so currently. Which sucks. It does suck quite a bit. American Republic looking mini pretty thick. Under Jeb. Jebby. Weber, huh? Hartman's holding on. All right with the DA. Hostile Solomon restored. Oh yeah, I should probably really play as uh, Ethiopia sometime too. Challenge Moscow autonomy, authority, hegemony. Wait. Harris reverses pro-Soviet policy. It's an indoctrination effort. The slogan, you serve the party. The party serves you. General Secretary, De Secretary Davis serves us all. She'll adorn every poster, every rooftop, every broadcast so that the people may never forget the good work done by the party, of course. Socialization, huh? Because we got a lot of stuff to do here. We need to remove that as well. Treaty of Seattle. Humiliating defeat. Oh. Wait. Do we have to lose? Going to get league. Um. Standing firm. Was I supposed to lose? Because now we can't go to war with Mexico. Ultimatum to Utah. Do we have to lose? 
Uh, let me know in the comments below. Was I supposed to lose? Because I, I don't want, I want to go down this path. If not, I will try to force this to happen. Well, that's not cool. All the way to Panama, man. What? Are we supposed to lose? Hope not. Oh, maybe it's over down here. We can do this stuff. Liberate Illinois. Okay, we can still do this stuff. Philadelphia, Texas, or to the Midwest. Okay. Yeah, that would that would really suck. Crusade against racism. The peaceful transfer of power in 1987 to Conrad Davis failed in a truly awakening of the revolutionary consciousness of our African American and pro and Chicano populations, where the campaign on women largely concluded. It's now to awaken the revolutionary spirit of downtrodden minority groups across the country. Yeah. What about Asians? I guess nothing for Asians, huh? I always forget about the Asians. Oh, we need more guns. Because we have quite a few more divisions now, which is nice. One, almost one and a half political power every single day is pretty good, too. State of Illinois, what a mistake. What an absolute mistake. But when is, when is the American Republic going to fight uh, uh, Chomsky's old battleground here? Or oh, Lavar Sony. He's got a nice smile. He does. Alright. Oh. Oh, you don't have your tail. Okay. Um. Is anyone else going to rise up and rebel? Does Kazakhstan cut these guys all off? No? What's, what are they doing now then? Caspian oil, huh? Well, alright. You can do that too, because we will need that extraction for later on anyway, so he must get it done now. What's Mexico up to? Emilio. Oh, okay. How much, huh? Unknown stuff. Cool. And challenge Moscow hegemony. Uh, Foreign Minister Harris has voiced numerous concerns about the undue influence of Moscow and the Warsaw Pact in general in her political system. With Harris's guidance, the General Secretary shall issue proclamations against unionists across the country, pledging a truly independent socialist America. Or America. Nice. Now we can improve these guys a little bit more. Do we have more artillery? Yeah, we do. Then it guns. Well, I'm combo with is kind of awkward and weird, but whatever. Whatever gets us more army XP. But I do say so myself. That was a really short focus. Nice. Party debuts anti-racism campaign. With the aid of longtime social activists and African-American ac academics and leaders, General Secretary Davis has announced a crackdown on racist attitudes within the party and society at large. While viewed by many skeptics with a potential purge, Davis has so far used the campaign not to eradicate remaining anti-Davis elements, must have legitimately improved revolutionary consciousness in minority communities, including the party's campaign's communist action, and an increased focus on progressive and diverse education in line with the Davis's previous projects, especially in the social sciences and history and, of course, general grants for Chicano and African-American organizations. Most of these organizations are substantially integrated into the party or associated with party lines, leading many revolutionary socialists to decry the social justice program. In fact, the project is believed to be the brainchild of Davis and Bobby Seale, a longtime administration member and former Panther himself, a revolutionary future. Fifteen divisions, what was that about? Whatever. The second three-year plan. Oh. Over the next three years, we'll be... The, we will be liberating opposed, oppressed people from Salt Lake City to New York. As such, the bureaucracy should be prepared to integrate a continent's worth of farms and factories in the economy, but engage workers. Following the relaxation of quotas, engaging workers in their fight to support the state will be much easier. Now, suppose we get to two full lines, then we'll start working on more military factories here. Uh, planes, yeah. Do plane stuff. Only 3% world tension. Can people kill each other? Okay. Wait, what? What? Wait, what? Aren't you the faction together? You left! What? Alright, whatever. Harris versus a pro-Soviet uh, policy. An unexpected but still groundbreaking combination of the foreign policy of disgraced unionist John Bellamy Foster. Foreign Minister Kamala Harris has publicly criti criticized the Soviet Union's hold on the UAPR, advocating for a uniquely American socialism in contrast to the Soviet system, labeled a stagnatory gener ger gerontocracy. The move and foreign policy is likely to greatly offend Berlin and Moscow. How is it to join the pact, even as an observer? Davis had pursued an independent policy even with Foster's guidance. Now, with the advice of Harris, has now moved towards self-sufficiency from the Soviet world order. Although there are not many core policy differences between Davis and the Soviet leadership, international critics note conflicts over social progressivism, minority rights, and spheres of influence on the Americas in the world, a new course for socialism. And then we are probably going to do what? Effective resource allocation? Unfortunately, pro poor administrations left poor have lost uh, resource allocation for national development as a total mess. The bureaucracy must be cleaned up and effectivized to ensure that everyone gets where it needs to be. Cool. Some more rubber, because we're definitely going to need some rubber in the future. But, now we got to decide. 
technology, industry, and or agriculture. I'll let you guys decide which one of these three should we do for the next episode. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will hopefully begin our march to take out the rest of the American warlords. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day.